If you see the wisdom in Jesus' parable about the wise and foolish builders, how building your house on the sand isn't really the way to go, you have something in common with the family of Mr. Bob Lee, creator of the Cape Romano, Florida Dome Homes. It's like what you would get if the houses on the planet Tatooine and the Monsell forts in the English Channel had babies. Bob was an oil man, retired Navy pilot, and millionaire from Tennessee who wanted a family vacation home off the grid for his wife Margaret and daughter Jane. Morgan Beach at Cape Romano near Naples provided the beautiful paradise he envisioned. He began work in 1980 with plans to construct a dwelling invincible to hurricanes. The science being without corners to catch stuff on, the dome shape was very aerodynamic. He even tried out the science on his land in Gatlinburg beforehand, building a full-scale model just without the 10-foot stilts. With neither electricity nor fresh water available on the island, Bob further demonstrated his ingenuity when he built troughs around the domes to capture rainwater. The water flowed down through a filter and into a 55,000-gallon tank positioned under the center dome, reflects Bob's granddaughter, Christian Maples, on her blog, Better Energy, Better Life. Christian was around a year old when she lived in the 2400 square foot dome home and is featured on a video tour, which I'll link below. All electricity was solar powered, unless it was cloudy on the Cape for a few days, then they'd use the two generators on the property. Bob used the sand and shell mixture from the beach to mix his concrete for the six connected domes, which left fewer things to have to transport to the island on his barge. He used curved steel plates as a mold, like halves of a basketball, to pour the concrete between. He sprayed in foam insulation and painted its exterior white for cooler temperatures in the Florida sun. From the finest specimen shells to native birds and porpoises, the beachfront setting promised ideal views from its many arched windows and skylights. There were stairs up to the foyer, which led into the living room, and no boat docking ability since the home was originally built a hundred feet from the water. Out the back door, the family could enjoy a hot tub and then take a beautiful curved ramp down to the beach below. There were three bedrooms, three baths, satellite TV, a fireplace, and of course all the modern appliances. There was also a pyramid house on the island owned by the Innes family who were exotic bird owners. Daughter Jane Maples told Coastal Breeze News, I can remember one time we went to the drugstore on Marco and some people in the row behind me were saying, have you been by those dome houses? And the other one said, yeah, but I hear they guard that with machine guns. Somehow it got a reputation of being a scary place. If that's what was said when the house was still on land and hadn't yet acquired its post-apocalyptic aesthetic, imagine what folks speculated in the years after that. Bob and Margaret finished the domes in 1982, but only lived in them for two years and then sold them. The new owners fell into financial problems, so the Lees repossessed the property in 1987 and lived in the domes full time until Hurricane Andrew hit Florida on August 24, 1992. Its powerful winds broke the windows and its floods ruined the interior. 
Erosion and hurricanes change the shape of the island dramatically. According to Natalie Strom from Coastal Breeze News, waves first began to wash into the domes in 2004. At that point, Bob decided it was time to sell the property. Naples resident John Tosto bought it in 2005 for 300000 Learning what he had, Bob advised Tosto to build a seawall to prevent further erosion. Tosto didn't and paid dearly. Hurricane Wilma hit on October 24, 2005 and destabilized the home's foundation. A tornado created by the hurricane wiped out the pyramid house as well. Tosto boarded it up and made plans to move it. Unfortunately, the area had become a bird nesting area and he needed special permits to do so. As Tosto struggled through the miles of red tape, Florida Environmental Protection made it even harder for him. From 2007 to 2009, they tacked on a $250 a day fine for him to keep it there. A catch-22 situation for sure. In 2017, Hurricane Irma sunk the two western side domes. Tosto tried to crowdfund the remaining domes as a sunken natural reef for sea life, but the money never materialized. Locals wanted to keep it for nostalgia and what a cool landmark it had become. Well, Hurricane Ian took care of that on September 28, 2022. Hey, thanks for watching.